My name is Harold Jaffe. I'm a professor of public health at the University of Oxford. HIV is an abbreviation for the human immunodeficiency virus, which is the virus that causes AIDS. We know it's transmitted primarily sexually by exposure to blood and from mother to child. We also know that over time it weakens the body's immune system so that an infected individual becomes susceptible to a whole variety of serious infections and even some cancers. But that happens relatively slowly, perhaps over five, ten, or even more years. The people at most risk for HIV really vary depending on what part of the world you're talking about. So in this country, in the UK, we're talking mainly about homosexual men, also recent immigrants from Sub-Saharan Africa and their sexual partners. There is also uh, an epidemic associated with injection drug use, and that's been seen particularly in the southern parts of Europe. One of the great difficulties about HIV is that most people who have it don't know it. They have no symptoms at all. When they do have symptoms, they tend to be rather nonspecific. Things like fever, weight loss, sometimes swelling of lymph nodes. But most people who are infected don't know it until they become seriously ill. It's actually relatively easy to diagnose <laughs> HIV infection. There are a number of different blood tests available to do this. Uh, there are some tests where you can get an initial result just in maybe 20 minutes, and it's possible to diagnose it in a single visit to a doctor's office. Certainly anyone at risk should be tested, and in this country that would certainly include men who have sex with men. Uh, it would make sense for uh, anyone who's ever injected drugs to be tested. Um, it would be reasonable, particularly for young people with multiple sex partners, to be tested for people from parts of the world where infection rates are much higher, such as Sub-Saharan Africa. And it is a routine policy in this country to test all women who are giving birth, uh, as well as all patients being seen in GUM clinics. The situation with treatment is both good news and bad news. The good news is that we do have very highly effective treatment available now so that most people can live quite normal lives for many years on that treatment. The bad news is that the treatment consists of multiple drugs, usually at least three drugs. All of them have side effects. If an individual misses doses of the drug, there's a chance that the virus can become resistant which would necessitate switching to other, often more toxic drugs. And the treatment isn't curative, so that you're really talking about lifetime treatment. We have no treatment available that will actually eliminate the virus from the body. I think it's important to understand that HIV AIDS is no longer the death sentence that it was 20 years ago. We have good treatments. If people are diagnosed early, if they take their medicine, if they keep their medical appointments, they can do very well. And we certainly have lots of people who've been on treatment five, ten years, or even more, who are leading perfectly normal, active lives. Now, how long can that go on? Will they live a normal life? We don't know, but I think there's a lot of reason for optimism.